Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Korg MS20V tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking our first look at a couple of modules. One of the difficult things about um, describing how a semi-modular synthesizer works is that everything's plugged together. So we're going to take our first look today at the filter bank and the modulation generator, but we're not going to cover all of the features because some of that stuff is linked to modules that we haven't talked about yet. If you're enjoying this series and you want to help support me, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Fabulous way to do that. Firstly, the filter. We've got two different filters, high pass and low pass. And as I described in last episode, there's a serial connection. The signal passes through one and then on to the next. Ultimately, it's effectively acting like a band pass filter. It's going to throw away both low frequency and high frequency. And the basic behavior of those two filters is really straightforward. Here's my basic note, and you can see this slope on the spectrum analyzer that's showing you all of the frequencies starting from the fundamental if I'm pressing a C you can see that we've got a fundamental of 65 Hertz so the biggest peak on the spectrum analyzer is there 65 Hertz from that point onwards we get all of the harmonics descending in volume as I increase the high pass filter we're going to throw away some of those low frequencies the sound will get thinner and thinner you can see them disappearing out of the analyzer until eventually we've thrown almost everything away and you can just hear this really kind of high nasal sound. One of the weird features of high pass and low pass filters is that the knobs work opposite ways around. So when a high pass filter is all the way anti-clockwise, it's basically not doing anything and it's the opposite for the low pass filter, which is why you see these two controls pointing in different directions. Speaking of the low pass filter, it's going to do exactly the opposite. There it's doing nothing. As I drag this knob back, we throw away high frequencies until we end up with something very close to just the fundamental. And in fact, it's gone very quiet as well. So that's the first part of it, but the full title of a filter is a voltage controlled resonant low pass or high pass filter. A really important word in that definition is the word resonance. This creates a spike or a peak at the cutoff frequency. Now you don't see the word resonance on this synthesizer. You see the word peak instead, but that's what it's doing. You also don't see a frequency based cutoff. We have a numeric value going from zero to one, but that is what it's doing. I'm gonna get the low pass filter, throwing some of the frequencies away. And I'm guessing the cutoff is around about 1.5 kilohertz. But now we can use science to prove what the, um, the cutoff frequency is. Because as I increase the peak knob, you're going to see a spike at the cutoff frequency, and that will tell us what it is. Here it is. So it turns out that the cutoff frequency was about 1.2, 1.3 kilohertz. So I wasn't a mile away. Now, did you also hear that high pitch whistling sound get introduced as I increased the peak? It becomes increasingly unpleasant. That's a feature called self oscillation. It's one of the um, the characteristics of a resonant filter uh, is that if you turn it up high enough in some systems, and this is one, you'll get this thing called self oscillation, where the filter itself starts generating frequencies based upon, there's a harmonic series, so you, there's gonna be multiple of them, but the bottom line is that it's based on the cutoff frequency. So you're gonna get a, a, a note, a, a sharp kind of nasal nasty sound at the cutoff frequency. It doesn't matter what key I press on the keyboard, the self oscillation tone is always gonna be at the same pitch. It's always at that 1.22 kilohertz kind of level. More often than not, you won't see peak pushed quite that hard. You'll see it operating in more gentle territory. And that gives us the ability to have really nice filter sweeps. That kind of business. I'm demonstrating most of these features on the low pass filter, but the high pass filter is exactly the same principle, just the opposite way around. So let's have a bit of that. The two filters can be made to do almost exactly the same job. They're just traveling in different directions. In the middle of the filter section, we've got this link knob. At the moment it's at zero, it's set to off. Uh, so these two filter banks aren't linked together. 
in order for me to demonstrate this, I'm just going to set both of the knobs to 12 o'clock for reasons that will become very obvious. Then I'm going to drag the link to the left hand side to turn it into same mode. Basically what this means now is that whenever I move one knob, the other will move to the same extent. And that's why I reset the knobs to start with because they were at the maximum and minimum extent. And if you do that, you're not going to get a very good demonstration because when I turn one knob up, the other one's got nowhere to go. Let's set them both back to 12 o'clock again, or slightly past that kind of business. And now you can see them very clearly linked. On the other side, we've got opposite, and I think you can probably guess what's going to happen there. Down at the bottom of the filter bank, we've got Mark 1 and Mark 2 options. Mark 1 is the original design uh, as first introduced in the MS-20. Mark 2 is an OTA, which is Operational Transconductance Amplifier. It's uh, basically a smoother uh, filter design. I've set it up with a little bit of resonant peak here. And here's our, uh, our Mark 2 tone first. Have a look in the Spectrum Analyzer. Relatively well behaved both in the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer. When I switch to Mark 1, you just get a much more brash um, angular sound, and that'll be represented in the analyzers by basically a more interesting shape. So you have the, the shape of the oscilloscope is dramatically different now. It's much harsher, far more harmonics involved. And that's a whistle stop tour of the top section of the filter bank. In order to discuss these sections um, underneath this white line, I wanna talk about these modulation settings. We need to introduce the concept of modulation, and that requires us to talk about the modulation generator. Modulation generator is Korg's definition of a low frequency oscillator, basically the same thing. LFO is far more the common term. This is the, the beta max to the VHS for people as old as me. So the modulation generator is a thing that generates a very low period wave, anywhere up to about 17 or 18 hertz and it's not used as a sound source. In fact, humans can't hear tones that low. What it is used for is as a means of modulating or changing something else in the synthesizer. And today I'm going to demonstrate it having an effect on the filter bank. See this flashing red light? That's the current speed of the modulation generator. And the middle of these three knobs is the frequency knob. If I turn that down to about half a hertz, then you can see that this light is blinking every two seconds. What I'm now gonna do is turn up the cutoff modulation knob, which is this one here. I'll hold a tone down, then increase the knob, and you'll hear the filter basically sweeping in and sweeping out automatically. That's the same as me doing this. What's happening there is that this slowly cycling wave, this thing that's um, moving backwards and forwards, it's actually a triangle wave, oscillating every two seconds, is automatically modulating the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. So this knob is for the low pass filter, got one over here for the high pass filter. Now the labeling on this knob is a little bit confusing. The MG stands for modulation generator. That's its normal connection. Remember when I said I'm going to use this term quite a lot during the course of this series? There's an intrinsic link from the modulation generator to this knob. It can be overridden. It can be overridden using the patch bay, which we'll discuss later in the series. But this means total external. And the external source is something in this scary looking section over here. It's really not intimidating. It's just too much to take all in in one go. So we're not going to try today. But now that we've introduced the concept of the modulation generator, I'll turn that down, we can backwards step to something that we dealt with in episode one, which was the oscillators, because we have the ability to, to modulate the pitch of the oscillators using the modulation generator. Here we have our pitch modulation knob. Here's our normal modulation generator control. So if I press a note and turn this knob up, Now the pitch is going up and down according to the speed of the modulation generator indicated by the flashing red light. Since we've gone this far, we might as well take one final step 
and have a look at pulse width modulation as well. I'll set myself up with a pulse wave on oscillator one. Oscillator one is currently audible. Turn the pulse width modulation knob up, normal to the modulation generator, just like the other controls. And there's the pulse width being modulated once again in accordance with the speed of the modulation generator. I've cunningly avoided talking about all these knobs on the bottom row because they require us understanding the envelope generator. That's the subject of the next video. Thanks very much for watching this one. I'll see you next time.